Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to do 2D rotations for any animation or game or simulation that you might be working on. So what are we after? We're after being able to have say maybe a vehicle or something and then maybe you're pressing left or right and then it's rotating and then you can move off in the direction that you're pointing that is something that can sometimes be tricky so that's the, the first thing on our agenda is to to kind of steer I guess steer a vehicle a vehicle steer a vehicle and then two the second thing we're going to do is what if you had uh, I don't know, like an eyeball or an object and you just wanted to say point towards something else that was on the screen so that's a different that's a different thing altogether um, and that we might call like a a look at behavior. So as long as we know something, uh, there's something else on the screen, maybe the mouse, that's maybe what we'll do. We'll have something point towards the mouse. So let's get going. Let's get going. So where should we do this? In space? Yeah, let's do this in space. So first we need to create space. So I'm going to use um, JavaScript, but all the, the maths, and that kind of thing. You could use in C, Fortran. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Fortran you'll be alright. Um, C Sharp, Java, whatever you're using. So I'm going to use JavaScript and I'm going to use uh, the P5 library, which is a graphics library and it handles input and things like that. If you're interested in how to set up this, have a look at my previous videos and things like that. And I'll put a link in the description hopefully, and that will show you how to set up. Anyway, I'll also put a link to, to this code. So you don't have to do anything. Right, um, what's the time? Okay, I'll try and keep this short. So, um, function setup. This is in P5 where the program starts. And we need to create like a, a canvas, an area where we'll do painting. Uh, create canvas. And let's just make it, I don't know, 600 by 600. Okay, and then the animation loop or your game loop um, in P5, it's called draw. It might be called update or something in whatever language you're using. Right, so draw, and then first thing we want to do is redraw the background or repaint the background, and we're in space. So let's have zero, which means black, although I'm tempted to have like a deep purple, something like that. Let's try that. So let's have about, I don't know, a, a, a cheeky 42, no green, a little bit of blue. Let's just see how that looks. Have we got at least something that looks like purple space. Yeah. Oh, I like that purple. Kind of almost matches my shirt. Right. It doesn't. This is blue. I don't know what I'm talking about. So we've got our we've got our canvas. So we need to put a spaceship in the middle of it. Let's go and make a spaceship. So class um space spaceship. Let's just call it ship. Ship. Um now we need a constructor. What do we essentially need? We essentially need a position for our ship um, and a rotation. So we'll, what we'll do first is step one, we'll do steering a vehicle. Our vehicle is going to be this ship. And so when we press buttons, we want to affect its rotation. Um, and I'm going to show you the maths of how to do it. So we need a position first of all. That's the most basic thing. So I'm going to call that pause. And I'm going to store it for convenience in a vector. And all this is is a positional vector. It will hold two things. It's going to hold an X and a Y. Um, and at default, actually, let's put it in the middle of the screen. So width divided by two, um, height divided by two. Width and height are keywords that P5 uses, and it stores whatever size canvas you've made. So our first 600 is a width. The second dimension, also 600, is the height. So position is in the middle of the screen. Um, now, now we need a rotation. So we'll call that rot, and we'll have zero rotation to begin. So if we make a ship, we'll be in the middle of the screen, no rotation. So now we need to write a function to draw our ship, and then let's get a ship on the screen. So I'm going to call it uh, draw ship, draw shop, and I'm going to use uh, p5 function calls to do this. Right, so let's draw, oh, God, I've got to draw a ship, let's do it like an egg. I love eggs, space egg. So let's do um, ellipse and it's going to be 
um, at this position dot x and this position dot y. If you're confused about the the dot x dot y, if you're you you know you might be coding this with just an x and a y, not a vector at all. But if you are using a vector in JavaScript um, and and most other languages, to get the the first component out, the x component, you simply write the name of the vector, which is pos dot x for the first component, and then dot y for the second component. If you're in 3D, you'd also have dot z for or dot z for the, for the final component. Anyway, so to draw an ellipse, I need an x and a y, and now I need to tell it how kind of like long and how high the width and the height of our ellipse. So I kind of want it to look like an egg, so I need to go longer in height. So first I'm doing width, so let's just do um, this dot size, so I'll have to make that variable in a moment, and this uh, dot size times one point, I don't know, 618, a golden egg, golden ratioed egg, okay. So there's our ellipse. Um, and we need to know kind of which way it's facing, so it'll be nice to do like a little circle on the nose of the, the egg. Right, and we need to make this black, so fill zero. Fill is a function call within P5 to tell it what color to fill its shapes with. So this first egg we want to be white, let's say. Not bright white, let's just go, oh no, a creamy 129, 192. Okay, and then the black, it's almost like the cockpit of our egg ship, will have uh, this position X, so that wants to be exactly the same, to be in line with our, to be lined up properly. I'm imagining, sorry, our egg is going to be facing kind of north, upwards. Um, so X wants to be exactly the same for this circle, but the Y is going to have to be shifted up. So it's going to be this pos Y minus a certain amount. So we want this maybe size... Um, times, um, so it doesn't want to be the full amount, so 0.8, something like that. Okay, that will do it. I, I'm going to make a promise. Whatever the ship looks like, I have to leave it, <laughs> so I don't waste my time programming the look of the ship, and I'll just focus on teaching you how to do the rotations. So size is, um, I don't know, uh, 100? Will that look good? About a sixth of the, the size? Um, I'm scared of that number. 42. 42 will have. Size 42. Right. So we've got our ship. We should be able to draw it. Let's make our ship. So variable um, egg, egg ship. And in setup, that's where we'll create it. So egg ship is going to be a new um, ship. There we go. So all that code is doing, I'm not really here to, to give a tutorial on classes and things like that. If you are interested in how to do classes in JavaScript using ES6, then look at my tutorial on, which one was it? I think it was, I think it was the snooker. So look up the, the snooker playlist or billiards or pool playlist. And that's where I go through how to make classes and things. Anyway, right. So... Basically, down here, I've got the idea of a ship. So it's got a function to draw itself, and it's got variables. It's got three variables, its position, its rotation, and its size. And so that's just an idea of a ship. To actually instantiate that object, I have to make a variable and then give that variable the value, um, attribute that um, uh, variable the value of a ship. And to tell JavaScript that I want a uh, like a user made object, I use the the keyword new. So that's all that's doing. Anyway, so I've got a ship, um, and in the draw loop, we can now refer to our egg ship. And if I put dot, I should have the function draw ship come up, which didn't happen, <laughs> which is worrying. So I've made a mistake somewhere. Let's just have a look. Draw ship. Everything seems fine there. Oh, right. Constructor needs parentheses. There we go. There we go. Right. Let's just see if we have our ship. And I'm not allowed to change how it looks if it appears. 
Oh, I can't see a dot though. That's the only problem. Maybe I've I got talking. Yeah, and no, I didn't finish it off. I didn't finish off the 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 cockpit part. So I just need this. We'll just call it this size divided by uh, three. This uh, size divided by divided by three times one point six eight. Okay, so do we have our egg ship in the middle of the screen with like a little cockpit? Okay, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> my the cockpit is misplaced, but I'm not allowed to leave it. It kind of looks like a nose. It's like a a egg ship has got a nose now. Okay, so let's get it rotating. That's what this tutorial is about. How do you rotate your your ship? So, um, okay, I lied. I'm gonna just change the the nose to be pink just so that you can see it a bit better and let's make it bright white so it looks okay oh god I broke my promise I said I wasn't gonna fiddle around with how it looks there we go you can see it a bit better now okay so let's get it rotating so we want to change this value this rotation value so firstly let's just get out of the way the uh, the input so function, I'll just call it check input. So that's not a P5 function, I'm just making this up. But I'm going to use P5's input management keywords. So if key is down, um, and let's say, I think it's called left arrow. Is that right? Left arrow. And then we're going to say egg ship rotation minus equals some amount I don't know 0 0.1 is usually my safety number and then we're get, kind of going to do the opposite for right arrow so if we're pressing the right arrow that value is going to get bigger by 0 0.1 okay so let's let's just make sure that's working um, so console log um, and that's left, <laughs> left, and then console right, right, okay, console log right. So now if I bring up the console, oh, guess what I haven't done? I haven't actually called that function, so it's not going to work. So I have to call in draw, every time we go around the draw loop, I'll just call check input and just see if key is down, right. So I'll do that right at the top of the draw loop check input there we go right so I'll run this I'll bring up the console which you can do in Google Chrome by pressing alt command J if you're on a Mac or control shift J I believe if you're on a Windows machine something like that right so now down here I've got the console up console up and I've asked a message to go there if I'm pressing left and right and I am doing I'm holding down left, and look, I'm getting 61 messages just then of going left and right. So this is what when programmers, coders refer to debugging, this is one thing that it might mean. They might be writing little messages to themselves and their friends in the console to check whether things are working. Right, so we're changing the rotation of our, ro of our egg ship's uh, rotation variable, but that's not actually affecting anything. So... How we draw the ship must be affected by what we're rotating. So, what you can do in P5 is add a rotation. So, in your whatever library you're using or programming language, you would want to find the, the function or the method to rotate. And an important thing is we want to rotate whatever we're rotating, we want to rotate it from the center of that vehicle so that we don't have the, the vehicle kind of moving around the whole screen like this or something. We want to kind of fix our coordinate system on the on the vehicle itself and then rotate it. So to do that in P5, we write um, translate and then we want to translate to the position of the ship, the very center of the ship. There we go. 
So all that's told P5 is to do is to say, instead of having the center of our, let me try and do this for you, the center of our canvas being 0, 0, which is the top left-hand corner, which is hopefully where I'm pointing to now, it says, I want the center of our drawing to be on our ship, right in the center of our ship. And then, once we've done that, we can rotate. So the keyword, so the function for P5 is rotate, nice and simple. And then I want to rotate by um, our rotation there, this rotation. Right, the rotate function, I believe, also takes in radians instead of degrees. Uh, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter anymore, we've just got units of rotation, I think. Okay, so let's just see what's happening at the moment. Now, it's not going to be correct. Let's just see what happens. So firstly, our ship is being drawn down here suddenly. And if I press left and right, <laughs> you see the ship is, I don't know if you can see it flickering in the corners of the um, canvas. It's going around and around and around. So that's a common bug that I just wanted to show you. So what it means is basically we are drawing um, from the center of the screen or from the center of our ship. And then we are now trying to draw our ellipse at this position, which is half the width again over and then or this way for you, this way and then down again. So basically, we just want to draw at zero, zero, because zero, zero means wherever our ship is, because we've translated to where our ship is already. Now we just want to draw at that location. So that's why that's happening. And that actually should be... Um, should be it. We should be able to just rotate our ship and everything will be fine. There we go. So we've got rotation of our ship working. Lovely. Kind of looks like an, an egg dog, a dog egg. Okay. So now the all important thing, when we press forward, we want to go in the direction that we're actually heading, which is the maths. So firstly, we need to give ourselves um, shall I just do this with a bit of speed? I don't know. This dot speed, we'll call it. Um, forward speed. F speed. <laughs> F speed equals zero. Um, and now we need another little function which we'll call move ship, move shop. And this will we'll imagine will keep calling in the in the um, update loop. So we want to say this position plus equals um, the forward speed and then after that's happened this is going to be like air resistance or space air resistance um, deceleration basically we're going to say <laughs> this f speed minus equals some amount deceleration amount I don't know or we could just times it I guess times equals um, 0.9 of itself, or 0.8 of itself. Okay, so that means f speed is going to get less and less every time we're calling this function, so that just, if we press forward, it won't fly off to infinity and beyond. Um, but if we press forward, it will move a little bit and then kind of gradually slow down. Hopefully that's what will happen. Okay. Um, so position plus equals s speed. Now notice position is a vector. It's two values at the same time. So that doesn't make any sense. This won't actually work. We need to plus x by some amount. And we also need to plus y by some amount. So we've put that in. That won't work. But let's just see if this gets our ship moving. So after we've drawn the ship, we're gonna call um, move ship. Let's just see, oh, and we haven't got um, any input yet. So we want to say egg ship um, forward speed plus equals, now acceleration amount, I don't know, 0 0.1 is my safety amount, so I'll try that. It worked okay for the rotations, and I want to say uh, if key is down, and now if we're using the forward arrow. 
Okay, let's just see if we can get our ship moving in a bizarre, bizarre direction. So there's some kind of bug. Let me just bring up the console. Uh, oh, I've forward arrow. Oh, it'll be up arrow. So that doesn't exist. Okay, up arrow. The meaning is that it's a forward arrow, but um, it's not known as the forward arrow, right? Okay. So I'm pressing um, pressing forward, and we're increasing x by the forward amount and the y by the forward amount, and it's just going that way. And it doesn't matter which way we're facing. So this this is the key to this video, the, the first part of the video. So let's just work out what's going on. So how to steer a vehicle. So number one, how do we do this? Um, we've got to know how much to increase x by and how much to increase y by. That's the, the questions we need answered. So we do that using sine and cosine. So all we have to do is say x equals x plus um, sine we might use a math function. So I'm kind of writing the code here. Um, math sine, but you just write sin, stands for sine. And then you put in your rotation. So that's going to be this dot rot, I believe, for our ship. How do we do the y? It's very simple. So y position is going to equal the y position plus math cosine this rotation. So there you see that the, the x and the y components of our kind of direction, our movement and position, are related to the um, to the rotation. They're both being um, controlled by that rotation. So let's put that into the code and see if it works. <laughs> let's have a look. So uh, ah, it's in move ship, isn't it? So we're saying this position equals or plus equals, that means equals this position dot x plus something else. So we're going to say this speed uh, that's going to come at the end. We want to say math sine this dot rot times this speed. There we go. And this y plus equals math cosine this dot rot this dot speed. OK, we've done the maths. Will that work? Put your bets on now. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to take a uh, coffee. Right, so let, let's, without any rotation, let's press forwards. And look, we're going backwards. That could be a very good sign or a, or a very bad sign. Let's turn a little to the right. And <laughs> we're not going backwards anymore. We're going slightly to the right, I think. And we turn more. Ah, this is kind of a good sign. As we're rotating, we're going in different directions. OK, can you guess what's happening? I'll give you this is like a little pause. I suppose you could pause the actual video. You can pause the actual video. The idea is, um, I'll not the idea, the answer is this y component is, is mathematically being done OK, but in 2D graphics, where is 0, 0? 0 is up here, and as y gets bigger, you go down. You go down the screen. So basically, we just got to flip the, the y coordinate. So let's say plus equals minus cos. Let's try that. Let's see if that solves everything. If this works, we can move on to the second part and we'll be done. Let's have a look. So rotating. Oh, I should have done the. Let's refresh. Let's do the the forwards without any rotation test. <sighs> OK, so far, so good. Rotate a little bit that way. Guys, it's worked. It has worked. That is how to do rotation. So now you can perfectly guide your, your vehicle around and and you've got it going. Maths. And it was simple maths. It was fairly, si <laughs> fairly simple maths. We've got 
the x component, write this down, I'll take a screenshot, for your x component it's sine times the rotation and for the y component it's cos and remembering to flip the y direction. Right, so now let's do something else which this time it will only require one formula. So look at behavior. How can we get our ship to look at where the mouse is? That's what we're going to do. So we're going to write another function called look at and this time let's take parameters let's take um, well let's take an x and a y so what we're hopefully going to do is in in draw we could move the ship I suppose and then it would be following the mouse so before we move the ship we'll say egg ship we would like you to look at and we're going to say mouse x mouse y again these are keywords in a wonderfully helpful p5.js library mouse x mouse y they just store where mouse x and mouse y is okay so how do we do that we want to what we're essentially doing is saying this rotation equals something we need the specific rotation if let's say my face is kind of the ship <laughs> if <laughs> if the mouse is up here we want to rotate which way that like that we want to rotate at it <laughs> and then <laughs> I can't do it and then move our ship towards that location that's what we want to be able to do or if our um, mouse is down here we want to be able to rotate all the way down like that how do we do that what is the function what is the the formula sorry the formula is so 2 equals we're now on step 2 2 equals, um, so the rotation, the rotation will equal, um, now what is it? <laughs> what is it? We've got to have, we've got to have a, a target and our own position. So the function is arc tangent 2. I'll show you what I mean. So it's going to be something like math. Um, a tan, I think it's called. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, drinks all around. I sneezed on camera. There we go. A tan two. I'm just using that two because there is an a tan function, but we want to we want to use two arguments, as I'll show you. So what what we need to do is say the I call it the the target x minus this position x so that's the target x component minus the ship's x component and then we need to kind of flip it for the next bit we want to say um, this position y minus uh, the targets y okay and I think that's all there is to it and that will mean that the, the rotation value will be instantly set to the, the direction of that target. <laughs> that's, that's the idea. That's what it should be. So this rotation equals math dot um, a tan 2. There he is. a tan 2. So look, it takes number y, number x. So we're going to say, um, what was it? We want the target. So the target here is the parameter that we're passing in. And it happens to be the mouse's x and y. So that's the target, wherever that location is, wherever that position is. So it's going to be uh, x, um, that's the target, minus this dot pos dot x. And then we're going to flip it and say... Um, the targets y minus this dot pos dot y. There we go. That should be done. Let's. <laughs> is it as simple as that? Let's see if we have to flip anything or if I've misremembered. Right. Ah, I've got something wrong. As I'm moving the mouse around, <laughs> it's not quite looking the right way. The the y the y is wrong. 
Oh, so maybe I was talking nonsense. Let's do this pos y. Oh, I did do it wrong. Yeah, sorry, I typed it in wrong somehow. So, as my formula said, it should be the 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 position y minus the target, as I said here. Right. You must have been very confused watching me type that and um, do the opposite of what I said. Let's see. Ah, now our ship is follow is looking at the mouse exactly. Oh, and it's not moving forward because I haven't applied any um, any forward movement. So let's let's also combine that. So when we when we call look at, we'll also move ship. There we go. And I'm going to add in a little speed here. Um, I don't know. I'll call it 0.2. Oh, you know what I should do? I can just increase f speed here. F speed plus equals. I think I should make this very very small. Let's see if that now works. Well, that will. Or maybe the deceleration will be too much. Yeah, it is now moving. It is now moving, I assure you. If I want it maybe 10 times faster, might be too much. It might get scary now. It might be chasing my, my mouse around. There we go. That's how to do it. And I can also... <laughs> I can try and fight it, because I've still got my steering. And I can still make it go faster by pressing forwards. But there you go. That's how to do that. So... That's the end of, of how to do it. A quick review. Um, a quick review. I'll do it in here. So if you're applying your own rotation to find the, the, the movement forward for your x component of your vector, your velocity, the direction you're going, it's using sine. And if you're in 2D graphics, your y-axis probably be reverse. So it's minus cos times the rotation. There you go. And the simple formula for... Um, what's that? Looking at a specific location from your location, as long as you know your location and the, the object's location, it's the target x minus your x, and then the target, sorry, your y minus the target y, and you're using arctangent, and in, in maths, all, all maths libraries will have arctangent 2, that means you can put in the two arguments that you need. So I'm. you should go and watch another video, or go outside now, but I'm going to just finish off the video by making 100 ships, because I think that would be funny. So I'm going to say egg ship equals um, an array now. Um, actually that might mess things up, so let's, let's, call, let's make a new array, let's call it egg, egg ships equals an array, and then I'm going to say for I, oh, let i equal zero while i is less than how many egg ships did i say i wanted a hundred and then um <clears throat> i plus plus there we go um and i want to push a new ship onto egg ships there we go i'm not really explaining anything now i'm just having some fun so en enjoy <laughs> um egg ships push a new ship. There we go. Now they're all going to be in the middle of the screen, so now I want to just change this ship, or each ship as I create them, um, their positions. So I'm going to say pos x equals um, math.random times the width of the screen. So math.random just returns a random, pseudo-random number between 0 and 1, and I'm just scaling that up to the width. Um, and then I want to do exactly the same for the y-axis. And then, oh, and then I need to draw them all in the loop. So I just need to do a very similar, um, a very similar loop, for loop, in our draw loop. Right, so I'm going to copy that. So I've made our ships, and now I'm going to I'm going to draw them first so that they that they go behind the the main ship. I could have changed their size to look really cute. I might do that as well. So for i equals egg ships length. So if you've got if you've made an array, dot length means how many things are in the array. 
So I can change it up here and this loop will still work dynamically. Um, so then I want to basically do this. I want to actually, I want to just do those two. Right. And I'm not talking about egg ship, I'm talking about egg ships. And each egg ship indexed through i. Okay, that should work. Bon appetit. <laughs> I can only see one ship and it's not moving. And there must be a terrible mistake somewhere. How disappointing. Look at, cannot read look at of undefined. 33. Ah, egg ships. I need to write. There we go. Hopefully that was just a minor bug and it will, this will be my grand finale. <laughs> oh, oh, this is quite a nice bug actually. This will really help you out if you're, if you're now confused about why this has happened. So we're getting terrible, terrible behavior. All our ships are like moving all over the place and, and whoa. I don't know how that's happening. Wow, look at that. Now that is that is special. I've made an egg ship circle. That was this is pretty stunning. This is pretty cool. Anyway, sometimes the bugs are better than the actual code you write. So what's basically happening there is every time we draw a ship, where's our um render ship? Sorry, draw ship. Every time we draw a ship we're translating to the center of that ship and then we're rotating everything else by its rotation. Then we're moving to another ship and then rotating everything else again. So we're getting this complete mess. So what you do in most programming languages, you can have something called something like push and then pop. Now it's as simple as that. That should now rectify the problem. Let's just see if it's worked and then I'll explain exactly what's going on. So now we've got, there we go, now we've got lots of ships pointed towards my my mouse location and I should be able to control one ship. Oh, there he is, <laughs> in the middle of the screen. So there we go, that's what we should have happening. Why is that happening? What, why did that work? So all push does, it that says save the current coordinate system. So it's saying save, that zero, zero is up here and that our rotation of the whole world is zero, nothing's happened. And then you can change the coordinate system, sorry, with these two lines. So I'm translating now to the center of the whatever that sh where, wherever that ship is. And then I'm rotating it by some amount. And what pop does, it reverts to the last save that you made. So you can mess around all you like with the coordinates and rotation. Pop will go back to what it was before. So that's all you do. You put push before you mess anything up and then pop to return to what it was before you messed around with the coordinate system. So that's how it works. Um, I hope all of that was really helpful. I wish I knew that when I first started programming, when I was about 11 years old, it would have been really helpful to be able to make vehicles go around and stuff. Any questions or anything like that, do put them in the comments and I'll, I'll try and help you out. All right, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.